Solo Swag says, Hey again, Tom, having trouble hitting my target calories every day to put on muscle mass. My body is a furnace and metabolism is naturally high and I simply don't have the appetite to eat as much as I need for optimal gains. Any tips? So yeah, let's, let's, uh, just tell me about it. Can you tell me some more about your situation and what you're struggling with? Um, I'm just a naturally uh, skinny guy, you know, small frame. My bones aren't big. So I was always skinny my whole life. So like around 130 pounds, I would sit at before I even started working out and stuff. So my appetite has never it really also, been as much as just for yeah, the record, ahead. uh, your height and weight, please. Yeah. It's five ten and around 150. It, it variates yeah. very, very often. It fluctuates a lot. How so, much yeah, is a lot? Very. Um, I'll step on the scale yesterday. I was about 148. And if I eat a lot today and drink a lot of water, I could step on today and be about 153 if I want. So intraday within the same day, you're seeing a five pound fluctuation is what you're saying. Yeah, right? it's big. That's yeah. normal. That's normal, by the way. So okay. um, if I wanted to maximize scale manipulations, I could manipulate mm -hmm. five plus pounds. And this is actually, it's a funny, interesting, useful tip that I would give to people who actually have like competitions where like money is on the line. I'm like, okay, okay. you got to pull every trick out of the book to manipulate that fucking mm -hmm. scale because everyone else is going to be doing it because oh, yeah. money's on the line. And so you do stuff like you weigh heavier for the weigh-in and then like for the initial weigh-in and so forth. Yep. So, but, but um, intra weigh-ins, intraday weigh-ins are not very useful. I, I, I do definitely recommend yeah. doing same time every day to actually track your progress instead of intra. So like, for example, weigh yourself when you first wake up. That's a pretty... Um, I would say uh, consistent time to work with. But that being said, sorry, I interrupted. Please keep going. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Where was I? Um, yeah, it's just really hard to get as much food in me as, you know, because I have to put a little, you know, extra more calories in my body than anybody else because my metabolism is just really naturally fast. So mm -hmm. I have to overload on calories to put on the weight. Otherwise, I'll wake up and I'll pretty much lose weight almost. It feels like <laughs> yeah. I look in the mirror and I feel a lot skinnier. Right. And so do you happen to know your maintenance calories and do you know what your uh, – what's your maintenance calories? What are you uh, aiming for for eating and what – are you tracking? Do you know how much you're eating at? Um, I would really do my best to try and track because I, I use the Fitbit every single day and I, you know, they have the app where you, you type in what you eat and it gives you like an estimate of uh, how many calories you know, that is. So I, you know, I use that as just a general estimate, estimation so I don't have like an exact number on that. But I would say my maintenance is around probably like 3,000 calories a day. That's why I bumped up to like 4,000 would be my target if I want to put on muscle mass because I really work out hard. And I figure I, when I'm working out harder, lifting heavier weights and stuff, you know, I'm burning a lot more than like someone who's also like my weight but not as tall as – you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just different for me I feel because my metabolism. Yeah, so sorry. I, um, some people are saying it's a little bit louder. I adjusted his volume. Um, let me know if – if it's better now I'm or like if I'm – if yeah, no, it's fine. No, 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 no. You, you don't touch anything on your end. You're fine. I'll okay. adjust it on my end because it's easier for me to uh, touch things. So uh, okay. sorry. So you were – I missed that. So let's just summarize really quick. Your yeah. your maintenance calories or your TDE is what and what are you eating at currently? I would say it's about – it's 3,000 and I probably hit about 3,500 per day. Okay. My Yeah, my TDE would be like 3,000. And you're tracking that with a food tracking app, and you said MyFitnessPal. That's what you're tracking with, right? Well, it's not MyFitnessPal. It's technically oh, sorry, the sorry. Fitbit app. Fitbit, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, 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 right. So you're yeah. so you're actually like you're entering your food, and you're looking at it, and you're 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 trying to estimate how much food that is, and you're coming out to about 3,500 calories per day. Yes. And sir. are you so? How much weight should you be gaining off of this? Do you think? Um, if I were to hit 4,000, you mean or? You know, no, if you're, you're, you're saying you're hitting 3,500 and your maintenance is 3,000, right? So uh, if you're consistently hitting that every day, how much weight should you be gaining, do you think? I'd say probably maybe like a half, half a pound to a pound per week, depending. But if, to me, if I miss one day of not hitting those calories, I feel like I lose everything. Mm. And so you weigh yourself the next day and you see yeah. that it's not there, right? Okay. Yeah, so exactly. Let's see. Let me think where to start. Um, why do you think you have a fast metabolism? I think it's just genetic straight up, honestly. Mm -hmm. Even though actually my family, I'm pretty much the only one with this metabolism. But <laughs> I've always, yeah. I was always able to eat like desserts. And when I was younger, I don't eat like crap anymore. But mm -hmm. when I was younger, I could eat desserts and everything, all the stupid crap without uh, 
gaining like a pound. So it's always just been that way for me. And how old are you, by the way? I'm 21. What's your gym activity like? And what's your, just describe your days. So first describe your gym activity and then describe what else you do throughout the days. Uh, my gym activity, I go to gym five days a week, usually take weekends off. I go usually at night around eight or nine o'clock at night because usually nobody's in there at that time. So it's nice, you know, um, I work out usually about an hour or so. I've been trying to cut it down a little bit more because I just I love working out. So I'll, sometimes I'll be in there almost like an hour and a half, like almost straight lifting the whole time. But I know it's, I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Why not? But uh, yeah, I feel like uh, an hour and a half is a little bit overkill, especially if I'm going heavy for my body because I'm just naturally like a smaller guy. Why do you I think really it's overkill? Long limbs. I just feel like it's uh maybe I'm burning too many calories, so maybe that's why I'm not putting on the weight I want. Because Are you I'm doing cardio than, too? You know. No, not much. I used to hit the bag in box a little bit, but I stopped doing that to try and put on more weight. So one nice thing is lifting lifting weights really doesn't burn that much calories. So you know reasons to not go for that long would be if your joints are hurting, if your sets quality set quality turns to crap. Yeah, I would okay. I would just, you know, I would just cut it short. Um, uh, yeah. That being said, you, you do have kind of a point about maybe reduce your sets a little bit or reduce how much time you're in there simply from the calorie burn perspective. But it's, it's not burning an insane amount of calories. It, it okay. really isn't. Gotcha. Uh, it could be an additional like 100 or 200 calories you're burning in there because of the extra work. All but right. That being said, um, let's keep going with this. Uh, tell me more about yeah. what you do outside of the gym. So you're doing like hour and a half uh, ish at the gym most days of the week what about the other days what about the other days and what about throughout the rest of the day um throughout the rest of the day i'm actually pretty sedentary to be honest with you uh, i only work part-time but when i do it's uh, usually a heavy labor so i usually take it easy at the gym after that so T tell me about the heavy labor job and how many hours it's usually about eight hours and it's uh heating and air conditioning installing really heavy furnaces and duct work up in you know in, in attics and stuff like that it's really taxing so it really put, puts a toll on me to the point where I don't even want to lift, <laughs> but I still how go many, anyway. <laughs> how many days per week are you doing eight hours a day? Usually three to four. Okay. So you got three to four days of doing um, AC work, right? Construction. We'll just call it construction. Yep. Doing yeah. construction. Yeah. You've got five, wait, correct me if I'm wrong, five days a week, was it? Five days a week. Working 4. out. Five hours, yeah. Yeah. In the gym, lifting. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And let's just let's just walk this let's walk this through and figure out your maintenance calories. Okay, so we're gonna go to my website, yeah. exclamation mark T D E E, and let's pull this up. So T D E calculator, tominationtime.com slash T D E. Your uh, age is twenty one. You weigh one fifty pounds, you are five ten. You, yep. uh, gym wise, you're doing moderate exercise, right? Your maintenance, yep. 2,600, according to the calculator. Okay. But you've always felt kind of skinny. You've always yeah. felt like you had a high metabolism. So let's bump that up to plus 300 calories for the base. So 2,900 calories right. is your maintenance. Plus, you're not really just doing moderate exercise. You're doing basically three to four days of cardio on top of five days of lifting, I would put gotcha. you at somewhere between heavy exercise and athlete. So for Jeez. your actual <laughs> um, activity level. So an athlete, right? So we should round up a little bit here. You could actually do the math in the future for the construction, by the way. If you have, do you have a step counter? You do, right? Fitbit. Yeah, I do. Yeah. How many, how many steps per day do you average throughout the entire week? Oh, geez. Throughout the entire week. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, if you average every <laughs> no, single day. I'm trying to pull it up on the app. <clears throat> so just like I know like some days might be 5,000. Some days are 20,000. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. rough average. Uh, let's see. Uh, like say like 50, 60,000 then. Per day or per week? Per week. Because about. Okay. okay. Yeah, usually. But yeah. Okay. So we'll put it at like 8,000 steps per day. Let's just put okay, it there. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that's accurate. So. There's a couple ways we can look at this to figure out your calorie estimation, because as you can probably tell, I'm already leaning towards you aren't eating enough. You probably already know you're not eating yeah. enough, but yeah, in definitely. specifically your minute, your maintenance calories is way higher than you think it is.
because you you yeah. or Fitbit right. or whatever it was estimating at three thousand. Uh-huh. I think it's higher than that. So probably um, is, yeah. Let's let's look at this in two different ways. We could we could just put you at extremely active because you're doing five days of lifting, four days of cardio. That's mm-hmm. basically somewhere around um, heavy exercise to athlete gotcha. in terms of activity. But we're going to put you at athlete because you say you have a high metabolism. You've always had this. So you probably burn a little bit more calories than the average person. This is going to be somewhere around a couple hundred calories, not like 5,000 more. That yeah, is extremely, yeah. extremely rare. So let's mm-hmm. let's. this is one way to like correct the estimations for how much energy you're burning. Another way to correct it is we go with the lifting only we put you at moderate exercise of lifting. So this will put you at like 2,600 calories or so. And then from here, we manually add in the other uh, activity you're doing. The construction okay. that you're doing, three to four days, a, um, we can average this out to just your Fitbit steps and round up. Because um, yes, you're doing heavy lifting and stuff like that. It's taxing. But we can use the steps per day as a crude estimation for the energy burned by just rounding up by a little bit. So what I mean is the miles you walk per day is still going to be a pretty good estimation. But since those are harder miles, in a sense, because you're, you're doing more activity while doing these miles because you're moving things around, um, we can round up a little bit. So let's just round, give it like a crude estimation of a 20 percent increase or so, 25 percent increase, 10,000 steps per day, 10,000 yeah, steps per day with roughly 100 calories per mile burned, and we just factor out average person is at 2,000 steps. We're we're, we're taking in what's the extra steps you're doing per day. So if the average person is doing like 2,000 steps per day, and I say average person because a lot of these calculators are basing it off what the average person is doing. Mm -hmm. You're doing an extra 8,000 steps. You're doing an extra 800 calories per day. So if we put your weightlifting at five, three to five days a week, plus 800 Mm -hmm. calories, what do we get? We get almost the same number of athlete right (laughs) almost the same it's roughly right these are crude estimations my point is your real maintenance is probably like 3300 and you're eating at 3500 barely and so you're barely and you're (laughs) you're barely gonna see a difference in terms of Mm -hmm. the weight gain on the scale and that's probably what you're seeing right for sure right so Uh, um go ahead yeah, when I uh, when I do actually hit that four, because I have tried hitting that four thousand for a week consistently straight, even maybe a little bit, you know, like a hundred more or so calories more than that. Uh, I feel like it honestly just all goes straight to my stomach, honestly, and not too much to my arms. But I also take creatine, so I mm-hmm. might uh, can you know help towards that a little bit. How but... long have you been taking creatine? At what dosage? Like three grams, five grams? I usually, yeah, I usually take about five grams per day. And, I'll and how take long? Usually about five. You been doing that? Uh, how long have you been doing I'm that for? Doing... Like how many months? Years? Uh, probably about eight months. Honestly. So the difference in creatine, you're probably already saturated at this point. It's yeah. you're probably not gonna see a difference from creatine. Um that's a yeah. good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh but yeah, the impressed. better question is I want to ask you why you said it goes straight you feel like it straight goes straight to your belly and not your arms. Why do you feel like that? Uh because I, I that's just what I see when I look in the mirror, honestly. Like mm-hmm. when I eat a lot like crazy, I'll wake up the next morning and I just I can tell my abs aren't as defined as they were, you know, a mm-hmm. few days prior. I, and it's and really how do you? Visual cue. How are you measuring that? Is it just the mirror, or are you, are you taking pictures? Are you taking measurements? Yeah, yeah, I have pictures too as well. Not measure. Yeah, I'm not measuring nothing. It's all just visual. Okay, so if you put those pictures, have you have you done a collage where you put those pictures together? Um, I haven't made one, but I do like screenshot it and I'll put it next to an old, an old picture, a picture, and just flip back and forth, you know. Do you know what your That's weight really is do. during those times? Like you, you have not just the pictures side by side, but also your weight. Not exactly, but I could I could estimate by looking at it because my, okay. my I could just look, you know, just know my body decently well. How well do you trust your eyes and your sense of subjectivity? Not good at all. My eyes are horrible, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> I how have do horrible you? Eyesight. So how much confidence do you have that it's going to your belly? And not your arms. Oh uh, no! I, if, yeah, if, you could definitely tell that my abs get less defined as I get, you know, as I put on more weight. But um, yeah. that's just gonna happen naturally, of course. You know, as right. you're getting more muscle mass. So right. I think so, I just have to trust the process and just keep going. <laughs> I agree. You got to trust the process. That's kind of the money money answer right there. You got to trust <laughs> the process because I'm not uh, worry about my dur- my abs. <laughs> yeah, during a bulk, what's gonna happen? Tell me. 
You're going to put on fat and muscle at the same time. 100%. That's going to happen. And if we are not good at measuring things, if we're just using subjective checks, where are we probably mm-hmm. going to see that as a male? That that Definitely that weight gain. <laughs> Definitely the stomach. So how can we improve this sense of subjectivity? By measuring, I suppose. Exactly. We got to be <laughs> measuring. That's 100%. If How your would I go eyes that? are, that's a great question. Fantastic question. If your eyes are deceiving you, and trust me, almost all of us, our eyes deceive us like this. Looking for more objective ways to check things is a very good way to stay sane. It's incredibly True. helpful. I agree. So, totally. So let's let's take your example. You feel like it's going to your stomach and not your arms. How can we mm-hmm. objectively check that? What would you think? Measure my waist. <laughs> measure your waist. How would you measure your waist? Do you have, I mean, what, what, what tools uh, would you use? I don't have one of those, uh, you know, flimsy tape measures that you could wrap around your waist. So I'm not sure how else I would do that. See, so I'm, I'm grabbing them right now. Yeah. Five uh, bucks. I need to invest in some yep. of those. Five bucks? Five bu- it's, it's like five bucks, something like that. You just get yeah, this. I need one of those. <laughs> once a month, measure it. Once a week, maybe if you really want, but once a month is probably fine. Measure it around the navel. Try to try to be consistent, and um, just you know, you're it's going to go up. But mm-hmm. one of the things that you're going to be looking for is in the mirror. You might feel like it's going up, but if you see you do a measurement here and you notice like, oh, I actually gained no inches, but I feel like I gained inches. How would that make you feel? Uh, a lot better, honestly, because <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, you know, you're deceiving yourself at that point. Exactly, and that's where the objective, the objective measures can help us stay sane. The same with the tape measure around the arms. That's another thing too. That if you feel like your arms aren't gaining size, it's it can be very easy for us to deceive ourselves because we're when you're bulking, you're losing definition. And when you mm-hmm. lose definition, you feel like you're getting fatter. You feel like you're not getting muscle. But a more true, objective measurement would be measure your arm size. How you do this is up to you. Just be consistent. I would recommend try to flex. Well, I mean, okay, if, if you if you do the flex, it better be under the same conditions of you just woke up and it's not like you just finished an arm pump workout. So like you just yeah, woke up in the morning, yeah. <laughs> flex, <laughs> go, for story. The, yeah, go for the maximum <laughs> size that you can produce um, and just measure that and check that over time. You don't have to flex, so you can also gotcha. do it unflex, but I think it's more fun to flex. And you know, anyway. All right. So, objective measurements. We talked about that. Let's see what else. For sure, man. Um, I actually found a picture. Good picture. And I, I, yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and just dump it if, in the Discord if you don't mind. Um, I was just okay. say another thing too, which is for um, the fat stuff. I think. Like I, I struggled with the same thing. I could not commit to a bulk because I didn't like that I was getting fatter in the belly, and so yeah, I stayed man. the doldrums forever, going yep. nowhere. So mm-hmm. that's you, me right ex- now. <laughs> yep, acceptance. You've got to just accept that you're going to get fatter and bulkier, and it's a part of the process. Trust the process. We talked about that already, but now let's talk at the real. This is the real problem. The real problem is you've Dude. got to eat a ton. You've you. It I, sucks. I, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You should be eating yeah, around 4,000 no, calories. To. You should be eating 4,000 calories, hoping to gain about a pound per week. Now, the question is, why is it hard? I really just don't have the appetite for it, man. Honestly, I feel like maybe I have to expand my stomach a little bit more just by slowly, gradually, you know, increasing the calorie intake. But I really just don't have like the appetite to always eat so much all the time. Like I don't even like in, like I enjoy eating. I just don't enjoy like overeating to the point yeah. where I just have to stuff myself. But I know I have to do it, so I'll do it anyway. You know, it's walk, kind of like walk me through your schedule ahead. for a schedule of eating. Like you wake schedule up in the day, eating, actually have a little uh, talk me about what you're eating and, and when. Uh, all right. I'll wake up and I'll have oatmeal protein. Oatmeal. I'll make two, uh, two little baggies of quick instant oatmeal and I'll throw like a whole scoop of protein powder in it. Mix it up nice with a side of fruit, some toast and maybe some chocolate milk. Or I'll have, you know, Kodiak protein pancakes, you know, with a side of like toast or something, some fruit, chocolate milk, you know, high protein. That's my first meal of the day. And then around like a couple hours later from that, I guess it's lunchtime, I'll have like an egg omelet with some pork roll on the side, toast with peanut butter and a couple Greek yogurts. 
and just for a snack i'll just have some like uh, a few hours before dinner i'll have you know peanut butter and jelly sandwich some more fruit nuts then i'll have dinner when my mom comes home you know usually about like grilled chicken steak you know like usually like you know with a side of uh like green beans and like natural normal dinner stuff and then uh after my workout at night around 9 p.m 10 10 o'clock i'll have my protein shake and that's really it would you consider everything you said to be pretty healthy or unhealthy Uh, you know for what i'm going for it's uh, moderately healthy i'd say (laughs) To me, it sounds fucking fantastic, healthy. Like, oh, all right, I, 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 like, I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying to sound like a you know narcissist right there. <laughs> uh, I feel like I was just reading the ideal diet from a fitness magazine of eating oh, this, yeah, not I've that. Been studying this stuff a lot, man. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> you just like checkbox, checkbox, checkbox of like, man. I <laughs> feel awesome, like I'm actually, eating junk. So I'm I, I'm eating junk food right now compared to you. <laughs> Like I, I don't I even like crave junk food anymore, man. I can't do it. I don't eat anything is, like that. This is this is great. I think you're eating so healthy, but that it's there's not a, there's, a, there's calories, a tricky right? there's not enough calories. One of the issues with whole healthy food is yep, it's typically not high in calories, right? They're not exactly dense. That's yeah, exactly right. I, I knew so, it was coming. <laughs> yep. So my question for you is, well, first of all, that's that's your problem, right? Like there's your problem. But let's let's try to troubleshoot this. What? Do you, how healthy do you want to eat? I'm not trying to advocate for being unhealthy. I can, it's just, I have different options to give. You telling me I should be more unhealthy to add some calories No, 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 no. I'm not saying saying that. (laughs) I want you to decide. I want, I I want you to decide what style of eating do you want to eat? Like, like how unhealthy or healthy do you want to stick to? Both can work. Can I show Um, your pictures on stream? Yeah, if you don't mind. Oh, oh, baby guys. Check this guy see, out, I feel man! Like, look like, at that five pound difference, man. I, you could totally see it in the abdominal cavity, my friend. Oh my goodness! <laughs> like this is. Can I just? I'm, I'm sort of. You may not hear the soundboard, but man, <laughs> that's one fifty five, and then um, one fifty. Well, hello there, Mister Construction Worker. Nice to oh, meet you. Oh man, stop! You're making me five blush. Five pounds. Five pounds, <laughs> right? Five pound difference. That's a, I would say that's a big difference. Yeah, I can absolutely see it. Your abs you are disappearing. It, right? And you know what? I don't blame you, man. I don't want to lose my abs. Exactly. I, I'm defined and I look good, right. so I should just stay like this, right? <laughs> right. But what did we say? What are better things to focus on? This goes for everybody in a bulk. What are the things mm-hmm. you should focus on in a bulk to keep the mental strength up to overcome that loss of abs? What What is it? Should you focus on uh, eating yeah. health? Uh, not overdoing it. You know, that's a big factor. Yes. What's overdoing um, it? Eating a lot of junk and going way well, a lot over your calorie target because then you'll definitely put on fat and yep, sugar. Right. Sugar will kill you, man. <laughs> well, sugar will do it big time. Why would sugar do it? In what way? I feel like desserts and stuff. That I feel like that's a big killer when it comes to putting on weight. I, I would like, say, uh, okay. Fat, why? Okay. I mean, putting on fat. I would putting say. on fat. Yeah. Um, you could just, could you, could, wrong, you could stop though. me. Yeah. You could stop me if I'm digging in too deep or you don't no, want to no, keep elaborating, ahead, but no. why, why do you think sugar is, or desserts in general, in, in what way would they make you fatter? I just feel like they add, they tack on to what you're already, you know, if you're already hitting your targets, if you're adding that on ahead of that, that's just, it's just unnecessary calories to me. Yeah. That, that's a good point. Yeah. Cause it's not so much that sugar is the problem, but sugar is easy yeah, to overeat calories, on. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's that's what I meant. Honestly, you said it for yeah. me. Yeah, no worries. This is what this is why we talk about things. It's fun. Yeah, it's so great. okay, <laughs> so let's let's uh, go on to talk uh-huh. more about what you want to eat. What like to what degree of unhealthy food or healthy food do you want to stick to? There's nothing wrong with wanting to eat very clean and whole and healthy. That's fucking awesome if you want to do that. Yeah. It just changes what our options are. Hey, man, I mean, if, if eating a little bit more unhealthy is going to help me put on the little bit of more mass that I want, because I only really want to be like 165, I feel like I'd be happy at, like lean, of course, you know, <laughs> but uh, if, you know, I mean, with that, unhealthy yeah. would. <laughs> oh, yeah, I I would. I don't mind a little bit of that right there. Yeah, you, you sorry. Get a little, get a little excited yeah, I mean... there, <laughs> but go on. So yeah, if if eating unhealthy a little bit more unhealthy would put on the mass I want, maybe I should do that. But I just losing my abs, it kills me, man. <laughs> right, but I feel like I once mean, I got to um, I'm sorry, once I got to like 165 and leaned out more, I feel like the abs would come back. That's what I that's my thought process on it. Do you feel like that's gonna be a struggle to 
to lose to I mean I mean now that we've talked about this how does that feel in terms of that struggle of losing the abs as you bulk what do you mean by that exactly like how, how I would mean it before feel walking into this conversation it sounded like it, it was a main it's a big struggle losing the abs how do you feel now um it, it don't just feed me mean, bullshit like, like tell to- me like like tell me how you really feel about the idea of losing your abs like uh, we, we just, talked about some objective it's measures. You know I mean? It's not like, like it's yeah. I don't I don't base my life around it. like oh if I don't have abs like oh like the world's over. Yeah. I just I just I feel like it completes my physique honestly. That's mm-hmm. I just feel like it's a nice you know it just yeah. looks nice you know alongside like everything else. So it's kind of just like a preference thing I guess. It's not like I'm gonna lose like I'm gonna lose my mind over it or anything, but yeah I would just naturally like to fit better in like clothes and stuff because I'm just naturally really thin. So I still I still fit in like smalls and everything man like. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, like my height and stuff, I gotta get mediums for certain things. But it's hard to fit in certain stuff. So, I, like another, I feel like another ten pounds would do me a nice justice and make me look more full. And in clothing, how would you feel? I feel like I would feel a little bit better, but probably yeah. Yeah, shirtless. I'd probably feel better what I'm at now with the, <laughs> the tone <laughs> this and whatnot. is this is the conundrum. This is the the yep the, yeah the, yeah you got me man yep Shit. yep like because I, I are you natty by the way are you natural. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I've only taken creatine, yeah. protein, protein, nothing. This else. is the natural, cur- the natty curse, man. It, it is. In, man. in clothing, you can feel big, but you feel fat, shirtless. In yep. when you're when you're uh, take the clothing mm-hmm. off, you can feel like you have abs, but you look scrawny in clothes, and that is yep, exactly the I curse. Look scrawny in clothes. That is yep. the curse. It absolutely. is the curse. Said, that's man. why. <laughs> just, just that's why you just take your clothes off all the time, and then it looks fine. Yeah, so. just walk around naked, bro. <laughs> Why not? Who the hell cares? Yeah. So let's – okay, let's go back to the food stuff. Um, yeah. You're eating incredibly healthy. That's fantastic. Let's Thank talk you. about some healthy, calorie-dense foods that you could try. Okay? Okay. Sounds um, good, man. There's there's two, two aspects that I want to focus on for the healthy stuff before we jump into the so-called unhealthy stuff. Um, for okay. the healthy foods. How do you feel about dried fruits and actually hold on before I ask that, what, uh, what kind of, you say you're eating nuts. What kind of nuts are you eating? Almonds, uh, cashews, pecans, uh, peanuts, eh, basically your, your basic, uh, trail mix. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're without eating a nice the, medley. M&Ms. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. A nice little medley. Um, I, I would, uh, if it's accessible and easy, can you switch those out for walnuts, peca- more pecans and more macadamia nuts? Yeah, I definitely could easily. One thing to balance with that is palatability. Because let me ask you, towards the end of these meals, just think about your breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Let's let's zero in on breakfast mm-hmm. if that's pretty memorable. Um yeah. how are you feeling towards the end of your breakfast? I do pre- uh, feel pretty full because I try to get that first big meal in me for the day. You know, I usually Cody usually my go-to is the Kodiak cakes, man. I love those things. They're delicious. So I'll eat like three or four big pancakes though, and I'll feel nice and nice and good for a few hours at least. Let's so say after I'll four pancakes, after I want to give you a fifth pancake and a sixth pancake. Your body Jeez. is not going to like Whoa. it. What part no, of your body? Not. <laughs> what part of your body is rejecting this? Just think about it. Like, like, where do you feel like the discomfort? If you had four four pancakes, I'm saying eat two more. Probably my stomach would just feel like it was bulging out, you know, and coming up my esophagus. <laughs> what about what about your uh, mouth or tongue? Uh, nah, not. It's really just all in my stomach. Just my stomach telling me to stop eating at that point. <laughs> Have you ever had the sensation at like a restaurant or dinner with friends, a big party or whatever, you were eating and you were super full and then dessert or something really delicious came out and you were suddenly hungry again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you just have to make room, you know, and that's that's what yep. you're trying to tell me to do, isn't it? <laughs> I, I absolutely am. But <laughs> that mechanism is going to be your lifesaver and the way you're going to be able to go from 3,500 calories to 4,000 calories. Gotcha. I got to think of it like that. Like I need this extra. The palatability mechanism, which is you're going to make it taste better and that refreshes our ability to eat more food. So um, a couple examples. Um, Let's let's walk through this example. Um, Do you put syrup on your pancakes? I do. I do indeed. Okay. And I'm, I'm guessing then it's already saturated to the point where it tastes just right. 
Right. Oh, it tastes amazing. I even yeah, put so, a couple of chocolate chips in there. Oh man, nice. I want some. <laughs> so if you well, if you put banana here and there. if you put more syrup on, it would probably not taste good. I'm guessing, right? It's not gonna taste yeah, better. Yeah, no, it would be okay. soggy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that you've already hit the right balance of palatability mm -hmm. there. You've already um, added in more. Uh, you've made it taste better, and you added more calories in, which is the strategy here. But let me ask you this: We've added carbs. What about fats? Can you fats, add fats to uh, that pancake? Yeah, I guess I could add some peanut butter on there. You know, that wouldn't kill it. Oh, uh, yeah. Now we're talking. Oh, yeah. Uh, now we're talking. Uh, yeah. I love it. You love it, don't you? <laughs> okay. What about butter? Butter? You think? Yeah. I could definitely. I, butter never hurts, man. Butter never hurts. A little bit of butter. On some pancakes. Because watch this. Add butter. Try this out. Okay. Whatever your pancakes are now. Mm -hmm. See if you could pack in one extra pancake because you're adding something else to it that's fatty, such as you gotcha. could try the peanut butter, you could try the butter, you could try coconut oil. You can go fuck if you love coconut Ooh, oil. I you do like coconut oil. Be be creative, I but think about <laughs> fats because you've already you've already saturated it with the carbs and adding more carbs mm -hmm. to the carbs is True. not going to make it taste better at this point. But gotcha. you've got the fats because you know what tastes the okay. you know why junk food tastes so good. Is the fats? <laughs> it's the perfect blend of ah. um, of carbs and fats. It's the right right balance. Because really? like, if you think about it, like sugar, people are like, oh, sugar is so addictive, right? If I gave you five spoonfuls mm -hmm. of sugar, would you enjoy that? No, I, I would fucking barf on spoon number three. You said like spoonfuls I, of sugar, oh, spoonfuls of sugar, <laughs> right? Yeah, if I give you oh, straight that's, that's spoonfuls sickening. of sugar, it's right to my stomach. Exactly. Like that sickens me. It's like the idea of having to do that. I could probably do one or two. I would, I would probably seriously vomit on the third one. Holy Why? Because it's, that's not palatable. Pure sugar is not yep. palatable. Same no with balance, butter. Yeah. If I made you drink olive oil, like how many shots of olive oil before you feel, well, olive oil's not too bad. Oh, probably but, about one shot of olive oil before I <laughs> Right. So, but if we instead create a salad with some crunch and we use some olive oil on it and we use a vinaigrette which is going to be a little bit sour and we add in a, maybe a little bit of ranch too it's a different fat and we add uh it's a sweet sorry it's a sweet vinaigrette take off the ranch it's a sweet vinaigrette so it's got some sugar in there and you add some like protein you add some other stuff suddenly all that stuff will taste pretty good right absolutely and this is the strategy the blend. that you need to be thinking about so wow, you your yogurt, wow. your yogurt. <laughs> what do you do with your Greek yogurt? Because you said you eat a lot of Greek yogurt. What's in it? Uh, usually I'll just have two plain, uh, the Oikos brand, the 15 grams with the actually doesn't have any fats in it. So I should probably change that up. I should probably yep. go for Chobani or something. But usually I'll put some granola in it, honestly, to fill it up a little bit more. Okay. Some energy granola. You already, you already took one of the answers in my mouth. Going for a full fat Greek yogurt is going to make it taste better and Absolutely. add more calories. Right. And I, I think Absolutely. full fat dairy is a healthy is a healthy source, assuming you have no issues with dairy. Um, no, let's talk about I, uh, I, I drink whole milk. <laughs> there you go. Uh, sweetness. Do you add any sweetness to it? To the yogurt? Yep. No, because they're usually already pretty sweet with the flavoring they have in them. OK, consider adding a different sweetener or additional sweets to it like honey. See if a little bit wow, of honey never, makes never it taste even, even better. That. That's a great idea, honestly. Wow, holy, holy crap. Because <laughs> this is the palatability tricks you have to think about to make things taste better. Okay? For what sure. are you drinking with every meal? Um, Usually water, honestly, which is no calories, so that's not helping me. <laughs> or chocolate. It usually morning chocolate milk, so yeah. Okay. Now, this is, this is kind of dipping into the unhealthy foods, depending on how you feel yeah. about it. You're a very yeah. active guy, so I'm I actually think – Sugar is going to be very helpful for you in moderate amounts. You want me to put yeah, a cap yeah. on it? Don't do an additional 75 grams of added sugar per day uh, yeah. or not added sugar. Sorry. Just stay under 150 grams of sugar, total sugar per day. You're probably going to be safe. That's for, for a lot of the science. It boils down to 150 grams. For someone active, you're probably still going to be fine. That being said, good. Um, how do you feel about fruit juice? Uh, I, I enjoy it. I just I'm uh, I just actually haven't drank it in a long time. I enjoy it though for sure. Wouldn't mind it. Grape juice, apple juice, any type of Love juice it. that you like. Take Love out the added sugar if you want to go slightly healthier. Yeah, 
That's, just yeah, go for I, it. I, I just read up on that. Uh, yeah, the sugars in the fruit juice yeah. is usually the killer. So yeah, it's it's not that big of a deal in my opinion to add a sugar. But if you, I know you're coming from a background, you're eating pretty healthy, and I don't want to disrupt mm-hmm. that. I want I want to minimally disrupt that because I think you're doing great. So if you can awesome. add in some sweeter drinks, that's going to not only add calories, but it's going to help cleanse your palate. So let's say, for example, awesome. um, for one of your meals, um, if you're eating something savory, let's what, what's your dinner like again? Uh, usually, you know, a couple grilled chicken breasts with a side of uh, green beans, mashed potatoes or brown rice or uh, what else off the top of my head? You know, steak, uh, sweet potato, potato. Um, that's that's usually my typical meal for dinner. Let's break that down for a second. What kind of steak? Uh, usually T-bone, flank steak, skirt steak. How fatty is it? I usually cut the fat off for the most part, but it's not really usually that fatty, honestly. There's a problem right there. Does, does, do you have any issues? I don't like the texture of the fat, man. Don't tell me I got to eat the fat. (laughs) Uh, Okay. It's, it's helpful. Um, not necessary. I mean, it is, but let me ask you this really quick. Do, do, does anyone in your family have heart issues, cholesterol issues? No, none of them. You probably you probably don't have to be that fearful of animal fats and cholesterol. I would still get your blood work checked nah. on a regular basis, but sure. and fats, especially animal fats, can improve palatability. Now, really, I that's that's new. I did not know that. So so, so but <laughs> but but try this, okay? When when I say you should eat the fats, walk me through what you would actually have on your fork as you stick it in your mouth. What do you mean? Like, what do I pick at? Like I said, for the steaks, you should have animal fats. You should eat the fat. Yeah, yeah. What are you thinking in your head that's going to be on your fork as you stick it into your mouth? What am I thinking? Uh, you know, Tell protein. me what, that, <laughs> what, what does that look like on your fork? I said, I said, solo swag, you should be eating the steak fat. And I, I, you said you don't like you don't like steak fat. Tell the me texture, what you yeah. see. Like if I if I told you to do that, you're, you're stabbing the fork down to pick yeah. up a piece uh-huh. of the steak. What is yeah. on there? What percentage protein or fat or whatever would I say you should eat the fat? What percentage uh, should I eat? Technically. Okay, let me, let me rephrase this. Yeah. Tell me in your mind when I say eat the fat as you have a mm-hmm. fork full of, of uh, yeah, this yeah. animal food. Gotcha. Is it 100% fat on that fork? Is it 100% oh, no, protein? Not. Is it 50-50? Is it 70-20? You know what I mean? Like, what are you yeah, visualizing I, I that mean, you're going to do? I'm visualizing uh, very minimal fat. So, like, 10% fat and the rest meat. That's that's in my head how I see it, technically. Okay, so on so, that bite, know, it's like little, a 90-10 ratio? Yeah, so you see that and, little piece of blubber on the edge of the steak? I cut that right off on the end. <laughs> so the 90-10 for the steak, uh, fat on the protein, does that gross you out? Uh, no, not really. It's just the texture of the fat that I don't like when you, you know, when you bite on it, it's just like, oh, I feel like I, right. it just feels like you're not supposed to eat it. <laughs> but you're, you're telling me though, when you bite on that, you're referring to a pure piece of fat, not protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat, no, right. It, you're right. Yep. That's what, yeah, I, now I know what you're saying. Yeah. Exactly. When you, when you eat it. Yeah. You feel like it's just, oh, I'm just, this is just fat, which is it's, not true. It's, it's fucking gross. Right. I love yeah, yeah. steak, but I, I never you. eat a chunk of fat because that just feels yeah, gross. Exactly. That's just but, what you think of it. Exactly. Exactly. So what I do instead is I cut off the fat and then if I'm trying to bulk anyway, I'm going to try to get every calorie, I'll cut the fat into pieces and I'll mix it with the leaner parts of the steak that has no Ooh, fat and I put them together. That's very smart. That that's way, smart, dude. I, didn't think of that. I am improving the palatability of every bite. I wow. will be able to eat more. That's awesome, Let's dude. Let's walk you through your dinner. <laughs> let's walk through your dinner. So you should you should try to eat that's the it. fats on there and mix it up I, so it's I'm balanced. Going to. <laughs> I'm gonna you gotta be it. thinking about maximum palatability so you can eat more. Um, let's 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 go through your dinner and break apart every different sensation uh, for the mouth for palatability. Let's think about different flavors. Let's think about different textures. What are we covering? So, tell me from your dinner. I'll I'll, I'll just throw out a few so you know what I'm talking about because it's very abstract. Like savory, sweet, crunchy, salty, uh, smooth, soft. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. walk me through what your dinner has and tell me like, okay, this contributes to savory. This contributes to salty or whatever. Okay, let's go. Okay. Savory, I would say, is the tenderness of the steak. And, you know, (laughs) sweet and salty would definitely be the seasoning for sure. Um, 
I usually do throw some, you know, Mediterranean Hold on. king salt on your like steak my is your steak is sweet. You put sweet stuff on that steak. Uh, not technically, but it, it's I don't know how I don't know how to put it. <laughs> it I don't know how to explain it, but whatever my mother puts on the season, okay. you know, seasoning wise, it's it's good. Okay, all right, <laughs> mommy, mommy's doing it. I'm not gonna attack mommy, oh, so yeah, let that yeah, one go. Nah. <laughs> okay. I will I, I won't attack someone's party. mother, so we will just you know what? <laughs> Steaks a steak. Alright, so it's contributing to sweetness. Interesting. Um, go on. Um that's really it, I guess. It's just tender and juicy and tasty. Okay, what else besides steak, the steak, steak during wise. dinner? Besides the steak, uh, you know, potatoes, starchy as you you know, I put a little butter in there usually, get some flavor in there. I guess that's what's sweet, savory. <laughs> but you're eating um, other stuff too, like potatoes or salad or whatever, is string beans, right? Yeah, walk me through those. Like, like you know, just every everything at dinner. What yeah. is it contributing to palatability? Um, I guess green beans is just. I don't even know. <laughs> Honestly, I just I just eat dinner, man. Are they crunchy? Let's think about this. Let's 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 yeah, actually yeah, like yeah, yeah. let's let's think crunchy, about everything. Right? Yeah. They got, is that a, a crunch? Yeah, okay. it does a little bit of a crunch. Slight, are they very are slight, they fatty? You know? Are they oily? Are they yeah, yeah, she's a little olive oil on them. Okay. She's a, yeah, they're not, it's not dry. Yeah, they're not dry. My meals are usually never dry. Okay. So, um, like, like, l- let me let me do an example. Um, with uh, let's just do a subway sandwich, uh, example. Uh, and I want you to try to apply this analysis to your dinner. Okay, I'm gonna go to Subway. My favorite sandwich is a uh, tuna tuna sandwich. So I on the tuna sandwich, I put tons of vegetables, so it's crunchy. Mm-hmm. My mouth is literally watering. I gotcha. put a lot okay. of mustard. I put a lot of mustard on it because I really like the sour flavors of the mustard from the vinegar. I also like um, if I'm trying to bulk, I'll put a bit of mayo. I'll put maybe some like some sort of chipotle white creamy sauce. It's creamy. Mm-hmm. It Ooh, is um, kind of smooth, and it blends well with the tuna. So I, I like to add a little bit of heat, a little bit of jalapenos on it. So and the bread is carby. Right, it's very starchy. So I'm covering for palatability right there. The starchy, uh, the starchiness, the um, <coughs> it's um savory. It's kind of fatty. It's sour. It's crunchy. It's hot. It's spicy. So we have like at least seven different, uh, or six or seven different check marks of what it's doing for palatability. And we move on next. I get chips. The chips are crunchy. They're salty. They're fatty. They're oily. Mm-hmm. Um, we also got the drink. I'm going to drink a soda. The soda is bubbly, right? It's an interesting texture on the mouth, on the tongue. It's bubbly. It's carbonated. It's unique. And it's also sweet. So I've covered almost everything that's, that, okay. that, that exists for palatability. <laughs> what about your dinner, Solo Swag? Um, I guess it doesn't really cover everything, right? It's I don't really – it's just sweet. Not sweet. What am I going back to sweet for? Uh, it's I got my crunchy vegetables. I got my steak, which is you know savory, a little bit of fatty. Um, it is harder to think about than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why. What the hell is going on here? I'm also looking for pictures, but uh, um, yeah, I guess I got I got to you know change up my dinner routine. I would. Sure I you don't have to change too much. What? Out of everything I just described, can you put more in so it tastes better? For example, uh, the drink. Probably something more sweet, you know. Yeah, I definitely could, you know, use like something to drink better because I, I literally always only have like water with my meals except for like yeah. in the morning. Yeah. You know, with milk and whatnot. Try, try this but, uh, out. See if by washing down whatever dish it is you're eating, washing it down with something sweet, see if that allows you to eat more food. Because it does it might, for me. Honestly. Yeah, you're right. Really? Because it cleanses your mouth. That's definitely the something same thing. to try, for sure. Um, think about making things saltier, spicier, more sour. Think about playing gotcha. with these things. Think about adding more cream somewhere, making it creamier, oilier. Um, with your side dishes. Okay, so walk me through the sequence. We're talking about timing now. Uh, the sequence of when you eat your food. So... Is is it by courses? Like you start with the salad, the salad's cleared, then we move on to the potatoes, potatoes are cleared, then the steak, and then the steak is cleared, then dessert, you know what I mean? Or is it the giant table is out, all of the plates are out at once? 
No, I, I'm actually going to send you a picture of my plate right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me a sec. But yeah, it's, I usually just start with, the, I just pick out whatever I want at, you know, first and I just have one full plate made. So it's not like a specific order or anything. It's just kind of like whatever I feel like eating first. But uh, yeah, it's nothing specific, uh, like an order. Okay. So. Because yeah. order and timing matters uh, in some sense. If you have the option mm -hmm. to eat everything at once, then the best thing to do is to uh, frequently mix up right, what your mouth is encountering. Frequently mix up gotcha. how um what your mouth is eating, and then the finisher. If you want to eat more, every everything that you eat one after the other has to taste better. If like I mean after you finish your like um main meal and now you're gonna eat your your dessert right. So like this is the the main meal right there. The whole perspective, dude. That is so that is so calorie light. I mean I just come on. on I felt so full after that. <laughs> I know and that's your problem because I'll tell you what, like just because it makes you feel full doesn't mean it's, it's actually, um, it's actually a lot of calories. That steak, true. Very where true. is the fat on that steak? I see a little yeah, bit right there, the a little yeah, bit right there. The yeah. I, 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 I can't lie. I did eat the fat on that steak because it, okay. you know, it wasn't much. These other. green beans do not look soaked in oil. I'm not saying you should soak them in oil, but I'm just saying like. They're dude, a little, yeah, there's a little bit of olive oil, but not yeah, much. Yeah. Right. Brown rice. Yeah, uh, dry. <laughs> this is a, a, a sweet potato. Yeah. I'm just curious, how many calories do you think this is? Uh, yeah. Seven, eight hundred. Hopefully, <laughs> that's a bit high depending on for how me. Big the steak is. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the steak. It depends on the steak. I would say somewhere between you know five or maybe seven hundred at, at a high at a high end. Um, track your food a little more carefully because you might be eating a lot less sure, than you think man. you are. Okay. Yeah, I, I um, think that's definitely a problem. Now, um, how to spice this up? Let's 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 sexify the sizzle on here. Can you? Um, uh, how? Okay, so we're talking about the juice. So we're talking about we're, we're already adding in the, the sweetness of this stuff. Um, sauce. What sauce, sauce can we add in? Some A one. <laughs> some steak sauce. Nah, nah, nah not, uh, not enough calories. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> what? Um, what do you enjoy in terms of making things? Uh, what kind of sauces do you enjoy in general? Like ketchup, um, mustard, ketchup, barbecue, honey sauce. mustard, yeah, honey mustard, yeah, ketchup, barbecue yeah. sauce. I love it. Barbecue, yep, love those. Can you throw in because you want to go? We're also going the healthier route. Can you throw in additional starches mixed with the sauces? So more potatoes, but you're using one of your favorite sauces to make it taste better, like ketchup, a um, uh, ketchup or uh, whatever's adding calories. Ketchup or gotcha. um, uh, yeah, honey mustard, that. all that kind of stuff. It's got to taste good because it doesn't taste good. It's not gonna. It's gonna be counterproductive. You've got to be adding more for the flavor. Get more of the fat. You're right, man. The steak. You're absolutely right. Can we make this steak taste better? I don't. I actually don't know. I, I really don't know. It's probably not practical, but you tell me. I'm not sure. How could we? Besides, you know, what, hmm, that's a hard one. Because steak already tastes amazing as is. It's just, yeah. Uh, what else? Probably can I really, more fat. Like, dip that's it. Yeah, more fat. Yes, fattier steaks like a T-bone or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Rice. Can we make the rice, rice. taste better? Can we add some sort of sauce? Probably what what sauce? What sauce would you like with that rice? What, what are my options here? What would you usually put in rice? Personally, I would add sriracha. I like hot sauce. Sriracha? I, I like spicy. Actually, honestly, never tried it. Oh, man. Do you like spicy food? I do. I do. Just a little bit, like a little. I would just do like a Ooh, you know a thin a stripe or two. Uh, teriyaki. Oh yeah, there you go. Ooh, teriyaki sauce genius. on the rice. That's even better because that's calories. That's Sriracha genius. is very very few calories. Sriracha is going to add no calories, but it will help you eat more because it's an interesting flavor. Um, the teriyaki is sweet. It'll help you eat more, and it's got calories. Do both. That was good. That would be awesome. Sriracha that's, and teriyaki. That's smart. Okay, that's definitely and a way to go. Here's what I want you to pay attention to and notice. As you do these changes, do you feel less full and do you feel like you could eat more? Because if you can eat more and go back for seconds, that's a win. You are getting more food in and you're getting your calories up. That's why I want you to pay attention for to sure. as you try all these changes. So and another um, thing is um, I don't like overdoing dinner because I, I, I go to the gym after dinner. So I don't like to go too crazy with my dinner specifically because I, and then I feel you know sluggish at the gym. So that's another big thing. So, um, 
have you thought about doing two dinners like a hobbit uh i actually haven't thought of it but it's i, I can make it happen <laughs> just do your like normal dinner gym. yeah do your normal dinner do a second dinner what would yeah, a hobbit what I usually do? do just make the, i usually do a like you know protein shake but i put peanut butter in there lots of fruit you know i, I load that thing up like oats i put everything in protein i put like two scoops protein like I usually make it like a really high highly uh, high calorie based protein shake for after the gym yeah I think, I think you've got some good solutions here. I think you have the right idea. Um, one last thing I would say is if you're still struggling to get your calories up, throw in at the end of meals or as snacks. It depends on what's going to help you more. Throw in a dessert of dried fruit and or nuts or both trail mix, right? You know why trail mix tastes yeah. so damn good? It's a perfect blend of salty Balance. nuts <laughs> And sweet M and M's and some raisins and is is carbs and you fats really together. Wrong, yeah, it's it's a beautiful it's awesome. mix. So think about that as a dessert. Whatever gets you hungry enough to consume a little bit more, that's the strategy. So um, uh, so again, like you want to go the healthy route, I would recommend dried fruit and nuts and nut butters, uh, fattier stuff like an egg yolk. Oh, there we go. That's an idea right there Ooh. on that. Oh, steak. I've put an egg on my steak before. I've done not. I don't do it often, but yeah, I'll, I'll put it over easy egg on my steak. I would just stick to the yolk and maybe less just egg white because the egg white is kind of calorie light. So, dude, egg yolks, fantastic, fantastic source of uh, multivitamin equivalent of B vitamins. Oh yeah, and choline. Yeah, when I make an omelet, I use they're like great. five eggs, man, all full whole eggs. Yeah, Big they're time. great. So can't go um, wrong with eggs. I think we've kind of talked about everything. Uh, yeah, for the most see. part. What else? For the unhealthy junk food route. Uh, actually, one more, one more thing. Before we go, I'll, I'll, I'll just finish with this and we'll end. Uh, for the healthier route, you could still choose, in my opinion, healthier junk food snacks or processed snacks. What I mean by that is they are using more whole food ingredients and they're basically just grinding it up and putting them together. That's what I consider to be a healthier gotcha. junk food snack. So as a rule of thumb, I would be looking for on the label, it's using whole foods that are just mechanically broken down. That's pretty much it. So, for example, using olive oil, avocado oil, like vir the virgin stuff. So virgin mm -hmm. oils um, or extra virgin oils plus just ground up oats, ground up flour, ground up coconut powder, ground up coconut starch, that kind of stuff. Um, and a nice marriage of sweets and fats so it tastes good. Do you shop at Costco? I do. Once in a while, uh, yes usually in Costco, they have the like processed junk food aisle and they also have the healthier junk food aisle and they're kind of right next to each other. So if you want to stay on the healthy route, you can just skip all the candy. You don't need that. You just go to the healthier yeah. side where it's going to be like, like um, they, they'll have like, um, let me think of some of my favorites. They have like these date fig bars that were, is basically a mixture of um, like ground up fruit and like nuts and some figs. I love figs. I think it's a fantastic flavor. They also have coconut rolls, which is basically ground up, um, you know, a, a whole ground up starches and, and flowers with coconuts. And it's, it's so good. And so these it's types awesome. of snacks would be fantastic finishers as mm -hmm. with, oh man, I'm so full. Okay, time for some snacks. And then you get a handful of mang dried mango, handful of Ooh. raisins, handful of uh, trail mix or whatever uh, or whatever else you end up going with. If you want to go the unhealthy route, let's get to that finally. Dude, pizza, burgers, donuts, cookies. I can always make room yeah. for cookies and yeah, donuts. I, I eat pizza pretty often, actually. <laughs> pizza is so calorie dense, man. It is, it is so easy to rack up the calories on that. So um, that's it, a good thing. They Don't be afraid of a bit of pizza. When we order. <laughs> there we go. Four, four slices. You know how many calories that is? I was about a thousand. <laughs> yep. If it's a large really? pizza, roughly twelve hundred calories. Wow. So That's awesome. I could eat. Uh, I thought it was if a I'm, lot less. Oh no, man! It's so dense. There's so <laughs> much carbs and fat in that, and it's so. Yeah, and, and I knew feel it was a lot of carbs. Yeah. yeah. But it's actually half, roughly half carbs, half fat. So don't underestimate the power gotcha. of fat. It is so useful for gaining weight. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Nut butters and such. Yep. Questions? Hmm. Me? Do you have any um, questions? Off the top of my head, nah, man. We had a good conversation. You really just, you really opened my mind a lot today, honestly, dude. It was awesome. 
there you go. Really what I needed to hear. Awesome. So uh, here's what I want you to do. Your homework. I want you to take pictures. Homework. Before and after, if you can, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, post absolutely. Post in the Discord of before and after of, of, of what you did for the meals, calories of the meals before and after, and describe if you actually did feel like you could eat more or less. Because I want to hear. Um, I want to oh, hear I really- if it's working for you or what's working or what's not. Absolutely, dude. Okay. And uh um, yeah. That's pretty much it. So good work yeah, today. Thanks so much. Come right. back, report keep reporting in in the stream and on Discord. Okay. Oh, I'll be here, man. I'm trying to make build this for myself too. You know, I think I want to be eventually a personal trainer of my own and help other people as well. So I'm just trying to, you know, I'm learning, you know, I'm learning as well. So it's like a big process for me. It's awesome. Yeah, man. This is I mean, if you're trying to get the looks of a personal trainer, you know what? I think you're pretty much there. <laughs> I think so. I think that's what a good pump going. I'll I'll listen to this guy. Oh my! That's what a good pump going. Thanks, so. Yeah, I feel I feel thin. I feel thin. Dude, lighting is an lighting and angles is everything. And you know what? You're thin, but you got definition, and that makes a big difference. So thank you. um, I appreciate that. If you enjoy the palatability discussion and you want to educate yourself more, I highly recommend the work of Stephen Guiné. His name is very hard to type, so I'm gonna type it out in chat. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I was going to say, can you please... Uh, Stand, you know what? It's so hard to spell. I'm going to uh, just double check on the interwebs because... Yep, that's right. Okay. It's like <laughs> Stefan Guiné. Whoops. No, ignore that. I typed it twice. So there it is right there. The S-T-E-P-H-A-N Guiné. G-U-Y-E-N-E-T. He is an obesity neuroscience researcher. He focuses on the palatability of food and how that makes a big difference for us, our ability to eat more or less. So it works both ways. If we're trying to lose weight, we're trying to gain weight. Um, That's pretty much it. So Yeah, man. That's it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I think we're all wrapped up, man. That's pretty awesome. No no other thoughts are popping into my head right now, unfortunately. Awesome. (laughs) All right. Good stuff today. Thank you, Solo Swag, for coming on. Can we get some hype well, and chat? Thank you for having me, man. I, this was very spontaneous. I didn't see it coming. I was like, you just asked me to be on an interview. I was like, all right, well, yeah, why not? Talk I, to him, see what he says, you know, I, open my mind a little bit, some ideas. Yeah, this is awesome. This is something I'm thinking about maybe doing more of if people like yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. It does take a lot of time, and this is kind of a spontaneous yeah, thing, but it's fun. It yeah, you can always cut it down to like set it to a certain time or something. Yeah. You get a certain amount of questions and whatnot, always change right. it up. Organize but if the, if the conversation sure. is flowing, I want to keep it going. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could always take it somewhere else and keep going and learn more. Of course, absolutely. Right. So, uh, good stuff today. Thank you, Solo Swag. I'll absolutely. see you back in Thank the stream. You, All right, we will definitely bye. see me again. Take care. If you like the content, like the content, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Also, follow us on Twitch and leave the notifications on. Feed your brain, feed your body, and see you next time.